become Lene, yeah. then clean slate, reset buttons hit. Exactly. I can be fresh. I can be new. Exactly. And it wasn't just creating Lene, because a lot of people were like, well, then how come you didn't create a guy? Well, the truth was, um, when I was being violated, it wasn't happening as a little boy. I was being touched on, grabbed on, abused as if I were a girl. The way my body was grabbed, the way I was touched, the way I was spoken to, I thought that, you know, like I was too damaged, and that was that. So, Dr. Selfie, this was an escape mechanism. I mean, this was never intended to exploit anyone. This, this started out as a way to escape this reality, this pain, and for a period of time to be someone new, someone fresh, someone different. Yes, to a point, but I also, as you can see, he's a very articulate young man, he's very intelligent, and I think he also knew there was probably something left inside of him that was good, and he was testing it out. And I think a mask would help him see that he is lovable, capable of being loved, capable of feeling love, without ever having anyone see him yet. Was it validating to you, to you, Renaya, knowing the interactions of Lene with whoever, Manti or who, whoever, that whatever reactions you got, whatever connections you, you had, were coming from you, were coming from Renaya? Yeah. Yeah, it was validating for him to see, I think, that he could be loved and could love. One of the most validating things was, like, I would sit back and watch how the impact that Lene had on Manti, and, and I would watch through his eyes the good that he saw in Lene. She was just that person that I turned to. And even though she was fighting leukemia and, you know, fighting various things, she always found time to serve someone else. And her biggest thing to me was always be, always be humble, always be humble. It was, you know, her character, her heart, um, humility. Uh, she always told me to keep God first. Um, a lot of the things that, you know, he was sharing with people and a lot of the insights that he was sharing about Lene had nothing to do with physical attraction. When I looked at Lene through Manti's eyes, I got a glimpse of who I was as far as my heart. I never sat there and tried to um, use him in any other way than to help him to, to be a better person. But that became another person for you. Lene became another person for you. Correct. Renaya's parents accompanied him to my home and were on the sidelines listening to the interview. I wanted to know how they felt when they found out that their son was the mastermind behind one of the biggest sports hoax scandals in years. So I invited them to join in the conversation. They had no idea that you were Lene Kakua in a relationship with Manti Teo. My parents? Right. Oh, until then, no one had, like, some people, random people had suspected that I had involvement, but no one knew that, you know, that I, I was. No one. When it comes to light that your son is embroiled in what has become a national controversy, a national scandal, and you find out that he is the she, that is at the other end of this online relationship with a false identity, with the runner-up to the Heisman. As a father, as a parent, how do you wrap your head around this? When we, when we first found out, as I'm listening, it just felt like drinking from a fire hydrant. It kind of just smacked us uh, you know, right in the face. Did you have any idea before no. Renaya told you? Absolutely. You just came totally out of the blue. It's like he just... Yeah. The first words you heard was from him. He sat us down. Before he even got to the Manti part of the, the story, listening to the, the abuse that he received, it helped put things in perspective. It took a while to sink in. I didn't really have a response immediately. Uh, my first response is, I love you, son. After hearing all of that, nothing changes my love for him. Nothing changes that the fact that he's still my boy. What did you think? When I came to me first and I didn't understand what he was trying to tell me, something looked very heavy on his heart. So then he just broke down and he shared a little bit. A few conversations later, the man Taiteo 
topic came up and I was upset because I was thinking of his family, his parents. I couldn't believe that <laughs> my son was capable of doing something like that. Do you forgive him his mistakes? Coming up. Not just mincing words with you here. That's not sexual experience, that's rape. That's a crime. And later. It's different when it's done in the dark and then when you're completely truthful about it and you come out, it's painful. We now return to Dr. Phil's interview with the man behind the Manti Teo girlfriend hoax. Do you forgive him his mistakes? Yes. In this situation? Do you think less of him? No. Absolutely not. Did you get the, the complexity of this? He had a relationship at every level. They became friends. They became lovers of sorts. They had intimate exchanges, sharing the most intimate aspects of life about faith and goals, and it was, it was at e every level. You also know that it got down to the point where this was a, a whole life. This wasn't just somebody's picture and sent a few emails. This was a relationship. This was complex. I mean, young people, any people, but certainly young people, don't do anything if there isn't a reason, there isn't a payoff. You, you had to know there was a reason he was doing all of this. and. And that's why you understood the importance of what had happened to him earlier. Yes. You've been listening to everything that we've been talking about so far. Hard for any parents to hear that their son has been victimized in such a terrible way. Um, tell me what it was like to hear, hear him talk about that. Uh, it was tough because of um, uh, the upbringing of, uh, of our son. Uh, when I was born, I was a sophomore in college. And I was still busy with football. I would say the first five years, I was rarely around. I was playing ball and traveling, and so I didn't uh, develop uh, that typical father-son healthy relationship. I was very dependent upon my wife's grandmother, just my family, just kind of <clears throat> be there for him. Listening to the ramifications, it was, it was difficult to hear, but so necessary. Were you disappointed that he didn't come to you the first time someone touched him inappropriately? Yes. As he was explaining it to me, I, I, all of the incidents, I, right away, uh, when he uh, told me the location, the time, where it was, I, I could go back and, and vividly remember, uh, you know, those trips, the times that uh, these guys came over, and that part right there was kind of uh, gut-wrenching for me. And, uh, How I, far I was, away were you when this was happening? Uh, were you near, in the house, yes. small house? Yes. We had Just a, 30 feet away, a room away? A room away. That has to be overwhelming yes. to realize because he's 12 and he's alone and he's confused. And he doesn't feel like he can come to you because he's afraid that he'll upset the apple cart and that you'll go away. That has to tell you how much he loves and values you being there. His being there meant more to you than the pain and fear you were suffering, right? You thought, I'll pay this price to keep him there. Yeah, yeah. And he paid that price for a long time. Yes. Does that affect the way you, you feel about the choices he's made? It gives me a, an understanding about the choices he's made. I, I, I uh, wrong, right, it, it gives me a, an understanding of why he did what he did. He says that he believes he's gay. 
says, I don't know, I'm confused. He says that's the only sexual experience that he had had. And I, I'm, I'm not just mincing words with you here. That's not sexual experience, that's rape. That's a crime. If, in fact, he's gay, you love him just the same. He is still my son. He's still our son. And we love him unconditionally. Coming up. People say, well, does he even have any feeling towards this? The truth is I hurt every day. For the decisions I made, I can't express how sorry I am. And later. Is he really the voice? I love you. You're going to go behind the screen and recreate these voicemails. We now return to Dr. Phil's interview with the man behind the Manti Teo girlfriend hoax. I mean, you've been very clear. You have been deceptive. You've lied. You've manipulated. You've perpetrated a fraud across an extended period of time and victimize someone that was just kind of sitting out there minding their own business because you were seeking to exercise some demons. I mean, to try to get away from a past. What do you take away from this that's positive? This whole experience has been, it's been a lot. Overwhelming isn't the word. One of the things I know for a fact, the positive things I walk away from this, it's not just for me, but for my family. I can't express how sorry I am towards Manti and his family and everyone affected by this. I can't express how sorry I am to my family and just the ones who've been there for me, no matter what, and everyone who carries my last name or has been affected by the media. I can't express how sorry I am to all of them. People say, well, does he even have any feeling towards this? The truth is I hurt every day for the decisions I made. This has been, I can't even say that difficult or trying. None of those words describe how hard this has been. I'm sure for Manti's family, for the Notre Dame program, but also for my family. And that's why I come here not trying to refute his story. I came here um, to own up to what my involvement and what I've done. And I'm not seeking everyone's forgiveness because the truth is, Dr. Phil, it doesn't matter how many goods I do or, or bad things I do or we do, not everyone will forgive you or like you. And so I can't make everyone happy and I'm not trying to, but I came here and I, I, I stand with courage to say, I'm very sorry for the horrible things that I'm well aware. Sincere? It's as sincere as it can be today with the opening of